FBL basketball matchup between the Columbus Condors and the Dayton Flight. I'm Seth Donahoe, and alongside me, Randall Smith. Randall, beautiful day for some basketball. Good day for basketball today. We get to see two teams from the state of Ohio, the Dayton Flight versus the Columbus Condors. Both teams are trying to get their second win of the season. Uh, they both had losses this last um, last night. I think the Columbus Condors played Friday night as well. Yes, they did. But before we get into the specifics of this game, Randall, I hear that you have something that you want to show the viewers. Yes. Um, earlier this week, I had a chance to sit down with Boo Osborne and Brett McKnight. Um, just kind of talk to them about what it means to play for the Columbus Condors, what it was like growing up in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, it was a very fun interview, and I think we'll kick it off first with the um, Boo Osborne interview. All right, so I'm sitting here with um, Brett McKnight, Boo Osborne, and the Columbus Condors. Um, we got to kind of speed up the time a little bit, so we're going to talk a lot of um, some Condors. But I got I got one question I got to ask you, uh, McKnight. What was it like growing up in Lancaster? Is it Lancaster or Lancaster? It's Lancaster. Lancaster. Everybody presents Lancaster. It's not land. It's no separation. It's Lancaster. <laughs> Did you grow well, up there your whole life? Yeah, I, was, I grew up 18 years of my life, and I went to I went to college. I mean, it was a little different. Uh, uh, we was the only black family in Lancaster growing up, so uh, it, was, it was a lot different than a lot of everybody, you know, maybe thought. Lancaster is the third less diverse city in the country, so that pretty much is self-explanatory. I'm, I'm going to tell you real fast. I used to, we used to go to uh, school shopping down in Lancaster. It was a value city, like slash Schottenstein's right on yeah. the, right the on, the, on the freeway, like right when you get off. Yeah. Nobody More. down there bought the clothes that I wanted. So it was always a whole bunch of clothes <laughs> that, that I liked in that, in that value city. So my mom always took us uh, school shopping down there. <laughs> yeah, the value city was pretty much the, I don't know, urban clothes shop that we had pretty much like it's only had until that pretty much diminished. So yeah, yeah. So um and this this question I'm, I'm gonna ask you first, um, Brett, um, with the condors, talk to me a little bit about you know what your experience has been with the condors and, and what does it mean to to play for the condors? Because you've been out of school for a little while now, you've been done playing college ball for a while now. What is it like to to keep your your playing career going, playing for the Condors? Oh, for I mean, first off, it's it's a uh, it's a great opportunity for you know guys to just play basketball, guys who want to pursue their dream. It's another opportunity to get film and get the name out there, and, and also able to continue to play. Um, it's a blessing that I have another opportunity being 32 years old to be able to be effective and still play the game of basketball. And um, I'm, I'm probably going to play until I can't stop. But, you know, playing for the Condors, it just it's a uh, it's a blessing. You know, you have to take it, you know, for what it's worth. You just have to make it, your, you know, your basketball life for at that time. OK, what about you, Boo? Um. My goal is simple. I'm trying to get out. <laughs> uh, and it's different trying to stay in shape. And you got open gyms and stuff like that. But when you have a legit team trying to play against another legit team who knows basketball, it's a whole different feel. Um, open gyms get lazy. It gets boring. Everybody goes for their own. When it's legit basketball, you got to actually – do principles that you were always taught to do that helps you win. Um, it's, 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 it makes it more fun. It makes it more appealing to play. Um, and also try to get that film, try to get that contract, try and get out. Okay. So here's a question I got. Um, one question before I ask this question, I got two questions. This question is for Brett though. Um, your journey right after college, what, what did you do right after you, finish at Akron? Uh, I went straight overseas. I went straight over to Germany. Okay. Uh, Germany was my first place I was at. So I was over there for a few years, but I, I graduated August 13th, left August 14th at 9 a.m. 
I was on the plane going straight over to Germany. So it was a quick turnaround for me. What about you, um, Boo? How was your journey after Ashland? I didn't get a chance to really talk to you in depth about Ashland, but what was your journey right after Ashland and going pro? Um, I actually had a year gap um, in between my first contract and me graduating. Um, I had a lot of different teams have me in the top three of who they wanted but they always went with the player that had more experience. Which I'm like, yo, I, I literally just graduated. Like, you can't get experience unless you play. Just like the real world. Um, you try to get a job, and they want somebody who got two to five years, but they're fresh out of college. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So um, I actually had to do a whole workout because my coach in Germany, um, he's from Cincinnati, but his brother-in-law lived in Columbus and had a gym. So I had to make sure I was ready. Um, staying ready every morning I was working out before work um and then I had a little workout and I probably missed three shots like I went unconscious I was dead after but <laughs> I went unconscious and then got the contract on Wednesday had to leave Thursday morning at 7 a.m landed Friday morning at 7 a.m had the first game on Sunday so um it was wild it was a quick turnaround but it's what I it's what I dreamed of so um it was worth it. Okay. So this, this is my last question. I'm going to ask both of you guys. Um, and I'll let you go first, Brett, because you're just coming in. What is it like playing for – I don't know if I asked this already, but <laughs> what is it like playing for the Condors, and what are your goals you want to get out of playing for the Condors? Um, what it's like playing for the Condor? I mean, I probably – I played with these guys for the past sheesh, almost three or four years. I played with, against Boo, with Boo, for the probably last, like, I don't know, through our last, like, eight, probably. You know, we've been going back and forth for a long time, and then, you know, we'll get on a team and then play. Um, so, I mean, it's it's good to play with guys who wants to play. You know, it's easier – to play with guys on a, you know, who want to play and, uh, you know, especially with IQ and stuff like that with basketball, obviously it makes it easier, but you start getting those guys collectively and put them on a team and put them on a team like the Condors, you know, it, it begins to be fun. Um, if I'm able to get a contract at 32, go ahead and slide somewhere over in the summer, which is possible that, you know, especially this summer, there's some leagues open up in Mexico down, you know, Puerto Rico area. You know, is it possible I could? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely would, you know, take that adventure, go down there for however long, you know, through these tape, if I get tape and film and play well enough, I definitely would. You know, so it just keeps the dream alive, playing, you know, playing around in this league and also playing it with the Condors. What about you, Boo? Emphasis program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 
Welcome back in here to the United Sports Complex for today's TBL basketball game between the Columbus Condors and Dayton Flight. Randall, that was a, a fun interview that I'm sure that you were able to get to do with those two guys. Oh, yeah, it was very fun, man. Those are two uh, cool dudes that just seem like they love the game of basketball, and they're not doing it for the money. They're not doing it for any other reason but just for the love of the game. And um, Brett McKnight had a chance to tell me that he was, he's was he been out the game for about 10 years now. Oh, wow. Well, let's go ahead and talk about today's game. As I said, day and flight coming in here to Columbus for uh, uh, this matchup. Both teams at one and two, and both teams actually both coming off of losses, so trying to get back on the right path. Yeah, this is a bit. This will be a real interesting game because, like, like you said, both teams are one and two right now. So it's kind of like they probably want to break even and see who can, you know, win between these two teams. They have the same record, so we'll we'll see who pulls it out today. All right, and uh, looking at the rosters for Dayton Flight first, they have uh, Tyrell Means, Tyshawn Johnson, who I believe is their leading scorer, correct? Yes, Tyshawn Johnson is averaging 24.5 points a game, so he's a, he's a scorer for sure. Also uh, on that team, Jordan Bedford as the tip is underway and the game gets started. Jordan Bedford, Josh Webster, Matthew Shuren, Patrick White as uh, Tyrell Means can't get that three to fall. Kelvin Fuller, Joe Ballard, Myron McGowan, Troy Cantrell, Pat T Turrell, and uh, head coach of the Dayton flight, Gary Armstrong, out there first for the, uh, for the Dayton flight. It looks like is Tyrell Means, Tyshawn Johnson, Kelvin Fuller. I'm trying to see here, Myron McGowan and Josh Webster. Boo Osborne, Cody Ballard, Richie Gordon, Brett McKnight, and Aaron Jackson in the starting lineup for Columbus. Couple possessions for both teams. No one's able to get on the board first, but here comes Osborne. Nice little kick out to McKnight. He'll take a three. That one's just short. Interested to see uh, Cody Cordell Ballard play today. Um, I haven't seen him play in over probably 10 years. He was a standout at Mifflin High School right here in the city of Columbus. And uh, playing in, I believe, his first game of the season. Uh, last game on Friday as Tyshawn Johnson's able to get the first points of the game. Uh, Cody Ballard scoring 39 points in that loss to Owensboro, 119 to 116. He's kind of like a player coach. He, uh, last week when I saw him playing against Owensboro, he was out there leading the way as the coach. And, and you just said he scored 39 points on Friday night, so I'm interested to see what he does today. Yeah, uh, he was uh, stepping in as the head coaching role as head coach Daryl Miller was out with a COVID-related issue, so he missed some time. Cody Bowler did a good job stepping in as Richie Gordon got fouled and goes to the line and knocks down his first one. Knocks them both down. As I said, both teams coming... Uh, Coming into this game, one and two. Both teams lost on Friday. Day and lost to the Kokomo Bobcats, 115 to 100. And Owens, or Columbus lost to Owensboro, 119 to 116. As that's a great find by Richie Gordon to Aaron Jackson. Aaron Jackson came off the bench last week. Um, I think they kind of switched the starting lineup up. A.J. Davis is uh, who's the leading scorer, averaging 20 points a game. He's coming off the bench today. Probably want to bring like some some good offensive scoring off the bench, so mm -hmm. we'll see how that goes. Well, if you have a guy like Cody Ballard scoring 39 points in their last game, I'm sure that you'll take that in the starting lineup and bring a solid guy like AJ Davis off the bench. Oh yeah, most definitely. Shot just short, means there for the rebound. Couldn't get that second chance to go, but Myron McGowan there is there to clean everything up. Be on the lookout for Kelvon Fuller. He's a six foot six forward center who averages 17 points and 17 rebounds a game. He averages 12 rebounds a game on defense, so he's a rebounder for sure. Cody Ballard. Tried to get him with the pump fake, ends up taking the three. That one's off. Tyshawn Johnson quickly the other way. Aaron Jackson just inside that lane. If uh, there would have been contact, he probably would have been called for the block, but instead Tyshawn Johnson will get the two points. Good drive by the bucket by Johnson. 
Richie Gordon, he'll go ahead and take a three. That one's good by Richie. Nice to see the big man step out and take that three. Yeah, I didn't get his, I didn't see uh, Richie shooting a lot of threes last weekend. He stepped out today and just shot one, and it went looked good going down as well. Nice take there by Tyrell Means as he's able to get by Cody Ballard. Kind of a bad pass there by Ballard as uh, Webster is able to pick that one off. Fuller can't get his first shot to go. Out of bounds, last touch by the flight, so it'll come back Columbus's way. Osborne will set things up. Gives it over to Gordon, then to the corner to Ballard. Boo Osborne ends up getting the ball in his hands. He'll take the three. That one's no good. Richie tried to get the offensive rebound, but it was poked loose. Last touch by Dayton, so Columbus will take it out underneath their own basket. Looks like the Condors are trying to get settled in. And a nice inbound play there as Boo Osborne wasn't quite able to finish. He had the shorter Tyshawn Johnson on him. He's looking to try and capitalize on that. Johnson, tried, go ahead. Tried to get that tip in. I think he would have been better off just grabbing the rebound and, you know, gathering himself and taking it right back up. Good defense there by Richie. Yeah, that's a, a 6-3 Boo Osborne against the 5-11 Tyshawn Johnson. And I believe Tyshawn Johnson, one of the shorter guys on this Dayton roster team. If the Inbound plays happen under Columbus basket. I'm sure that they'll look for some more plays like that as it was McGowan who wasn't able to finish that fade away, but I think that was Fuller there on the offensive glass to clean things up. Yeah, Kelvin Fuller, once again, he grabbed that rebound like as he always does and puts that ball back in for the bucket. Brett McKnight going to the work against McGowan, but can't get anything to fall. Here comes Fuller the other way. Good defense there by uh, McKnight. Doesn't necessarily agree with the call, but Fuller will go to the line and shoot two here for the flight as they have a 10-7 lead with 7.22 left here in the first period. Looks like the Dayton flight wants to get off to a fast start. They're pushing the ball. They're um, driving to the basket. Uh, one thing I want to see is if the Condors can stop that. First one rattles in and out for Fuller. Second one is up and gets that one to fall. Osborne looking to set things up at the half court line. Finds McKnight who then finds Ballard in the corner for three. He'll take it. That one's just off the mark. Fuller very active here in this first quarter with another rebound. And that one will be an offensive foul as looks like he got Boo Osborne in the face with an elbow. Boo a little shaken up, but he seems to be all right. Eleven to seven, Dayton flight with the lead here. Seven minutes remaining in this first period. Osborne will get it down to the post to McKnight. McKnight looking to go to work against McGowan. And uh, was able to get McGowan in the air with the pump fake and uh, a foul going on McGowan will send Brett McKnight to the free throw line. One thing I noticed about the Condors, what I seen last week, was that their bread and butter is getting the ball down in the post to Brett McKnight. And if they can keep getting the ball down to him, he's going to make things happen. As you can see, he just got fouled on that play. But getting the ball down to him is like probably, if not, should be their first option. And uh, we see as uh, Brett McKnight not only effective on the inside, but also a solid three-point shooter as well. And he also looks like he's effective off the court, too. He's 
in the timeout with the team, but he ran down some flowers. I'm not for sure who, who he gave some flowers to, but maybe his mother, maybe his grandmother, not for sure, but he's an affectionate guy. Brett, Knight, Brett McKnight just does it all. <laughs> so first time out here in the game, 646 remaining here in the first period as the Dayton still have an 11 to seven lead. And coming out of this timeout, McKnight will go to the line for two free throws, looking for his first two points of the game. Richie Gordon with five of the team's seven points, a nice three-pointer and two free throws. His first one is up and good. Richie Gordon tried sneaking out of there, but the ref said that you have to go back down in for this free throw. Knight with the second one is up, and that one is good as well. Cuts the lead, cuts the deficit to two. Means with the ball, hands it off to Johnson. Screen coming by Fuller. He'll end up taking the three. That one is a good looking shot by Tyshawn Johnson. As you can see, you're starting off here early. Johnson's shooting the ball. He's driving to the bucket. I can see why he averages 24 points a game. Ballard with the ball. Todd Brown checking into the game for the Condors. That one deflected out of bounds by McGowan. We'll stay here with Columbus. And A.J. Davis and Khalil McCormick now checking in for Cody Ballard and Brett McKnight. Interested to see if A.J. Davis comes in and takes over the point guard position. He was running point last week, but Boo Osborne started off today running point, so kind of interested to see who takes over at the point guard position. Nice step back shot there by Boo Osborne over Tyshawn Johnson. Means with the ball looking for a lane, can't find anything. Passes to Johnson. Nice ball handling, but better defense there by Boo Osborne as that shot is short by Josh Webster. Columbus comes the other way, A.J. Davis with the ball. Gives it off to Richie. And oh, couldn't quite get the flush to go down against Fuller, as Fuller quickly comes the other way. And he just blows by everybody, Kelvin Fuller. But Richie Gordon quickly the other way says, I was not going to miss that one that time. He, he made up for that Sprite commercial right there. <laughs> he had a little rim, Jim. McCormick against Webster, kicks it out to the corner to Means. A.J. Davis there with some good defense against McGowan. Could get that one to fall. Davis quickly the other way for Columbus. Man, he can't get that one to fall either. Fast-paced back and forth game here. Boo Osborne swats that one away from McGowan. I don't think this is the Condors pace. I think the Condors like to slow the game down, get the ball down inside and create that good shot. Maybe a little bit of a rush shot there by McCormick as yeah. he couldn't get that one to fall and quickly the other way comes McGowan and he'll finish things off. You don't, you don't want to fall into the trap of the opposite team. You always want the team to play your game. And for Dayton, the Condors are playing their game, which is what's giving them the lead right now. After a short breather, Brett McKnight comes back in for Richie Gordon and Jalen Benton checking in for Boo Osborne, giving him his first break. Eighteen to thirteen lead for the Dayton flight. With 4.20 left to play here in the first. Johnson has the ball. Ends up kicking it out to McGowan. That three is off the mark. Good hustle by McCormick and Means. He means ends up with a ball. Good defense there by McKnight. 
And nice defense there by Jalen Benton as Tyshawn Johnson wanted a foul but wasn't going to get it. Todd Brown and Khalil McCormick quickly come the other way and good defense there by the flight as it was last touch by Dayton and will stay here. Condor's ball. Looks like the refs is letting them play a little bit. Not too many fouls called here often. And I'm um, looking at Pat Shuring, uh, Matthew Shuring coming in right now. He's the, actually he's the second leading scorer on the team with 17 points a game. So interested to see what he brings to the game. You said you had a chance to see him down at Urbana, if I'm correct? Yes, Urbana University after I had graduated uh, my high school days. I went to Urbana University, tried out for the basketball team, and Matthew uh, Shuren was a sophomore or junior at the time. Good shooter. Shuren is a very athletic 6'4", uh, uh, guard forward player. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do for this team. Todd Brown will end up taking the three for the Condors. That one's no good. Shuren with the rebound. Johnson brings it up the court for the flight. He'll end up taking the three. And Jalen Benton is going to get called for that foul. He's not happy with it, saying that as Tyshawn Johnson shot it, that he had grabbed Benton's hand when he was defending. But Tyshawn Johnson will go to the line for three free throws. First one is up and good. Gets the second one to fall. And Tyshawn Johnson able to knock down all three free throws. That gives him 10 points here in the first quarter alone. 21-13 lead for the Dayton flight. Jalen Benton with the ball ends up kicking it out to McKnight. And that ball is poked loose. Quickly the other way comes Tyrell Means, and he's able to flush that one home as A.J. Davis couldn't get back in time. Nice flush by Tyrell Means. I think Brett McKnight was looking for the foul on the other end of the court. But as you can see, once McKnight got to the bottom of the bucket, you've seen all those players swarm him, and that's what we need to give back to for the Condor. Yeah, there was about four players around, all around McKnight. Benton will end up pulling up for three. That one's just short. Shuren with the rebound. Up ahead to Jordan Bedford. He'll take a three. That one's short. Nice rebound there by McCormick. Todd Brown bringing the ball up the floor. Screen there by McKnight. Brown will end up taking the three. Gets that three to fall. Good shot by Brown. Good defense there by Jalen Benton with a full court pressure as he was able to knock that one out. And it looks like we are going to have a timeout here with 2.30 left to go in the first period. Dayton has a 23 to 16 lead over the Columbus Condors and Randall Tyshawn Johnson with 10 out of the team's 23 points here just in the first quarter alone. Uh, you know, as going on further with the game, that's something that the Condors are going to have to put a hold on. They're going to have to stop that because obviously he's a high volume shooter. He averages 24 points a game, so he's their go-to guy. I think with the Condors, they're having a little trouble with putting somebody on him that could, you know, that has the same type of speed as him. I think that's why they brought in uh, Jalen Benton because at first you had, um, I want to say, Boo Osborne was sticking him, but Boo Osborne's not quite as fast as him, so. You want to have somebody on him that can kind of challenge his speed because he wants to drive to the bucket. And it looks like uh, Tyshawn Johnson will get his first break of the game. So Troy Cantrell, Jordan Bedford, uh, Pat Terrell, Matthew Shuren, and uh, Patrick White will come out for the Dayton flight. Khalil McCormick, A.J. Davis, Todd Brown, Brett McKnight, and Jalen Benton out there for the Condors. Good defense there by McKnight as he's able to knock that one out of the hands of Bedford. Pat 
Pat Terrell gets it over to Patrick White. Patrick White will end up pulling for the three. That one's off the mark. Todd Brown there with a nice rebound. Gets it up ahead to Khalil McCormick. He'll find A.J. Davis on the corner for three. Then he'll find Todd Brown on the wing for three. Got that three to fall, Todd Brown. Nice shot by Todd Brown. He's came in and lit some threes up off the bench today. Yes, missed his first three, but is two for two since then. Brings that to a 23 to 19 game. Flight still with the lead. Terrell with the ball. He'll end up pulling for three. That one's off the mark. McCormick and Shuren hustling for the ball, but Shuren got the better end of it. Shuren was trying to find a cutting Jordan Bedford, but the hands there by McCormick was able to knock that one away. Just a shot clock. Make sure that they got the shot clock in order. 10 seconds now on the shot clock. Ball ends up in the hands of Patrick White. That three's off the mark, but Bedford's there for the offensive rebound. And then the nice reverse layup there by Jordan Bedford. Had a little Julius Irving going on right there. Nice shot. A.J. Davis trying to squeeze by two defenders. Ball ends up loose. Now the ball's in the hands of Todd Brown. He'll find Brett McKnight. Thought about a three, will end up taking it. Bedford tries to slap it away from behind. Five seconds on the shot clock. A.J. Davis with a deep three. That one's off. Bitten's there for the rebound. Todd Brown trying to get by Shuren. Ends up kicking it out to McCormick in the corner. That three is good. Khalil McCormick. Nice shot by Khalil McCormick. The bench is obviously having a good game right now. And Jordan Bedford quickly the other way, gets a quick two. 27-22 lead for the flight, 30 seconds left to go here in the first. Todd Brown finds A.J. Davis on the wing. A.J. drives, can't find anybody, throws it off the backboard to himself. Looked like he might have had an alley-oop to himself, but <laughs> just couldn't quite get the finish. And then quickly the other way, Brett McKnight's able to knock that one out. You don't see that a whole lot in the game. First person I, that comes to mind when I see that is Tracy McGrady. <laughs> he did that in the All-Star game a few years back. Sixteen point eight seconds left here. No shot clock, so the Dayton flight can hold for the last shot if they so choose so. And it looks like they will. Jordan Bedford with the ball in his hands. Seven seconds. Nice screen and roll there by uh, Troy Cantrell as Jalen Benton was a little late and he'll end up getting called for the foul. That was an excellent pass by Bedford. Um, great find by him. With 2.2 seconds left, was able to get the ball to a cutting Cantrell, who's able to finish through the contact. Jalen Benton picks up his second foul. And that will end it here after one Dayton flight with a 29 to 22 lead over the Columbus Condors. We will take a short break and be back right after this. This is TBL basketball here on the Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. 
Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Back here. Back here at the Ohio Sports Complex where the Dayton Flight has a 29 to now 24 lead against the Columbus Condors as Boo Osborne was able to be uh, wide open for that layup. So with the exception of um, Todd Brown, they brought the starters back out. One thing I liked is that um, all the bench players that came in for the Condors kind of created like a good spark for them and kind of brought them back. So I'm interested to see how this bench plays in the second um, quarter and going forward. Tyshawn Johnson leading the way for the Dayton flight in that first period with 10 points. Richie Gordon leading the Condors with seven. And uh, speaking of Richie Gordon, right there with a the nice active hands. And quickly the other way, he finds Aaron Jackson for the layup. Seth Donahoe alongside Randall Smith Jr. and Randall, that first quarter, it seems like to be carrying over to the second quarter. The day and flight have brought the uh, offensive intensity as Boo Osborne knocks down a three. Good shot by Boo Osborne. I had a chance to talk to him earlier this week. Like I said in the beginning of the game, he said his, his real name is Elias, but his basketball name is Boo. So his, I'm going to call him Boo. His stage name, if you will. <laughs> Columbus and, Condors, go ahead, Randall. Uh, no, I was going to say, you know, Dayton likes to run up and down the court. And like I, I, I said, you know, the Condors, they like to play like a half-court offense, but they do know how to get up and down the court. I mean, it's not like they can't do it, but I think it's just a matter of them being comfortable with doing it. Well, the Columbus Condors have opened up this second quarter on a seven to nothing run, being able to tie up this game uh, just over a minute here through this second quarter. Yeah, and they're gonna have to keep playing tough. Um, it, you know, from what I've seen in the last couple of games, their bench is deeper than in the, the last two teams they played. So just keep going with the bench. Keep, you know, bringing in your starters and getting good shots and playing defense. So Dayton Flight end up calling a timeout after that 7-0 run start here to the second for the Condors. Tyshawn Johnson is back out there for the Dayton Flight. And that is going to be a, an offensive foul and a legal screen on Myron McGowan. That's his second. <laughs> Boo Osborne with the ball in his hands for the Condors. And Tyshawn Johnson is going to get called for that one as Richie Gordon was setting the screen. Ball inbounded to Cody Ballard. And uh, Aaron Jackson there with a the tip in. Looks like, I'm not sure if Aaron Jackson tipped that one in or if Cody Ballard got the friendly roll. That's what I was going to say. I don't know who you would give that bucket to. It kind of looked like Aaron Jackson had a tip on it. They're probably going to give it to Jackson, but it looked like it was going to go in anyway. Well, we will go ahead and uh, give it to Jackson here in our own scorebook. Richie Gordon ends up getting the wide open lane, takes it, and is fouled. Can't get the basket to fall, but will go to the line for two as that foul is going to be on Josh Webster, his first of the game. Richie Gordon lost his shoe right there. Cody Ballard after that 39-point outing on Friday against Owensboro. No points here today, but still doing other things to be able to get his teammates involved. Yeah, interested to see Cody Ballard today. Um, I think I know he wants to get going. I'm sure the team wants to get him going. Uh, so interested to see if he gets going today. So Richie Gordon 
is at the line shooting two, knocks down his first one, the 6'10 forward out of Atlanta, Georgia, played some ball at Western Carolina. Right. Good big man, able to great post game and is able to step out and shoot the outside shot as well. Is able to knock down both of them. Condors now on a 10-0 run to start the second period. I'm sorry, 11-0 run. And Myron McGowan quickly nixes that. So he's able to get their first points of the second quarter. Todd Brown goaded closely by Means, couldn't get the long step back to fall. And uh, McGowan and Richie Gordon going for the ball. McGowan upset that he, he thought that Richie Gordon had shoved him out, but not the case. And from here, it looked like Richie Gordon did push him a little bit. Cody Ballard and uh, Josh Webster was getting a little physical on that inbound play. And uh, the chipping is really picking up here in the second quarter. Oh, yeah. The whistles are blowing more. And I was saying a little earlier, you know, they, they wasn't calling fouls in the first quarter, but now they're calling. Brett McKnight checking in for Todd Brown. Tyrell Means with the ball for the day in flight, trying to find a lane against Aaron Jackson. Camp kicks it out to McGowan. That shot's off the mark. Boo Osborne trying to find Cody Ballard. Cody Ballard and Josh Webster still going at it. Richie Gordon finds Brett McKnight and a nice finish there through two defenders by Brett McKnight. And like I said, that's their bread and butter. That's what they're going to have to do to keep a hold of this lead is to keep that ball down low. We're going to get another foul here on uh, number seven. That'd be Richie Gordon as Tyshawn Johnson was driving to the basket. Tyshawn Johnson, a crafty guard, able to uh, create his own shot. Good ball handling to get to the lane, but can also shoot the three really well. Yeah, he can shoot that three well, and, he, and I like the way he drives to the bucket. Nice ball movement there by the Condors as McKnight finds Jackson. Couldn't get it to finish, but Jackson will still go to the line for two as Myron McGowan picks up his third foul. And we had talked about that, you know, the Columbus Condors, they like to run their half-court sets, but here in the second quarter, they've really been moving the ball up the floor. Yeah, they can do a little bit of both. Um, and that's a good thing to have. If you're a team that can play the half-court game as well as get up and down the court, um, as long as you're not getting yourself out of the game, not shooting yourself out of the gym, and not having a lot of turnovers when you're getting up and down the court, um, you know, I don't have a problem with it. And it looks like, they're not having a problem either because they've now taken the lead. Aaron Jackson was able to knock down his first free throw. A.J. Davis checked in for Richie Gordon and now Kenny Council checks in to give Cody Ballard a break. Second one is up and off. Tyshawn Johnson with the ball guarded by Osborne. Ends up finding Fuller. McKnight on him. Fuller can't get the long two to go. Who Osborne ends up with the ball in his hands. Quickly the other way finds Aaron Jackson down low on the post. Joe Ballard guarding him. Aaron Jackson with the fadeaway. Tough contested shot. Good defense there by Joe Ballard. Tyshawn Johnson comes the other way for Dayton. He'll take a step back three. That one's off the mark. And uh, scrap for the ball as that one was last touched by Tyrell Means. 
and will end up in Columbus's hands. And as you see that last play down before by the Dayton flight where Tyshawn Johnson kind of drove the ball to the, to the, uh, to the, to the hoop, he kind of caused a lot of reaction by the Condors to have them collapse on him. He can kick that ball out and pass it to pretty much whoever he wanted to. And A.J. Davis tried to find a cutting Osborne. He couldn't finish. Tyrell Means gets it, tries to throw it up to Joe Boward, but good defense there by Davis as he seen what was coming to be able to swat it away. Ballard falling out of bounds, had to just get it in. A.J. Davis kicks it out to McKnight on the three. Can't, that one rolls in and out. McKnight had a good look at the basket, just didn't fall for him. And uh, that pass there by Josh Webster was able to find Tyrell Means. As Tyrell Means, who is only, you know, 6'2", can really elevate. Because we've seen a couple dunks from him in this game. Yeah, he's, and he's Boo a Os high flyer for sure. Boo Osborne was able to split the defense, but past couple layups here by Boo Osborne hasn't gone his way as that one got halfway down before rolling out. And now we're going to see Jalen Hearn checking into the game. Haven't saw a lot of uh, Matthew Sure, and I'm not for sure if he's in foul trouble or he just hasn't been just hasn't been in the game a lot. Well, it looks like Matthew Shuren has one foul. He's standing over there on the bench. Looks like he's always ready to get into the game. Get some perspiration cleared up off of the floor and get ready to get here to play. 6.49 left here in the second. Condors now with a 36 to 33 lead. Knight gets it over to Hearn. Hearn with a long two. That one's off the mark. <laughs> Hearn has a funny number, number 70. Joe Ballard with a nice little crossover there as he's able to get the basket for the Dayton flight. Nobody got back on defense on that play. A.J. Davis with the ball in his hands. Nice little behind the back to get past Kelvin Fuller. He wanted a foul, but nothing was called. Another rebound by Fuller. Tyrell Means with the ball in his hands, finds Webster, then kicks it out to Tyshawn Johnson. He'll take a long three just off the front iron. And that one, lost touch by Joe Ballard, and will go Columbus's way. Even though that shot didn't fall for Johnson, that's a player that you cannot leave open especially somebody who can shoot those three-point shots like that. And uh, Dayton, that last possession coming down the floor on that fast break, Brett McKnight seemed to be getting in, uh, in the face with somebody. So we'll look to see if uh, what his intensity can bring to the game. It's Todd Brown. He's able to find a lane. Can't get that one to fall. Brett McKnight can't get the rebound. Now he does. But his second chance doesn't fall. Kelvin Fuller the other way. He'll end up just pulling up and taking a long two. Jalen Hearn ends up with the ball. He lost it. Lost control of it, Jalen Hearn did as he was trying to quickly come the other way and try and get a quick two points, but wasn't able to. So Dayton now quickly the other way for them. Tyshawn Johnson guarded by Hearn. I think both teams need to just slow down a little bit. There's a lot of sloppy play going on right now. A lot of chippy play going on as well. Tyshawn Johnson was in the post against Hearn. And uh, he's not happy with that foul call as the ref all the way up here near midcourt called that one instead of the ref under the basket. But Tyshawn Johnson will go to the line for two and look for his first points in this quarter. As he started off hot with 10 points in the first. Rattles his first one in. Good 
Jordan Bedford checking in for Josh Webster. Second one is up and good. Those two free throws, that gives the day in flight the lead again, 37-36 with five minutes left to go here in the second. Jalen Hearn gets it over to Todd Brown. Brett McKnight trying to post up Fuller, but Fuller being in front of him. Ballard will end up taking that three. That one's just off the mark. McKnight doing everything he can to try and get a foul call, but Calvin Fuller is all over him. Good hard there, foul there by Cody Ballard is a uh, Jordan Bedford was going up for that one, not giving him anything easy and making sure he earns those two points. How many of that is on Ballard? That is Ballard's first foul. His first foul. First one falls for Jordan Bedford. Second one is up and good as well, giving them a 39-36 lead. 440 left to go here in the second. Ballard brings it up, gives it over to A.J. Davis. A.J. Davis with a nice finish there against Joe Ballard. And Cody Ballard with a full court pressure is able to get that steal. Nice steal by Cody Ballard. A.J. Davis with the ball. Gets it inside to Aaron Jackson. He'll take the mid-range jumper. That one's off the mark. Means ends up with the ball in his hands. Looking to take a long two. Ballard there with a good defense, but Joe Ballard there with the uh, offensive rebound. Nobody stepped out on him as he shot that three-point shot. No, he did not. I think there's kind of like some miscommunication with the defense right now for the Condors. Joe Ballard started running the other way, assuming that Jordan Bedford was going to make that three. But then that loose ball, last touch by Cody Ballard, so it will stay with the Dayton flight. Tyshawn Johnson, that three short. Quickly gets it up ahead to A.J. Davis, and he'll flush that one home. Good flush by A.J. Davis. As he went for the steal on that inbounds pass, he kind of got slipped up, and that was able to give him the chance for the inbound or for the uh, outlet pass. Ballard gets it over to McKnight. McKnight with the easy layup there. Good take by McKnight. Nice find to Jordan Bedford, but good defense there by uh, A.J. Davis, but Tyrell Means was able to be there to clean everything up. Todd Brown trying to find something, kicks it over to Cody Ballard, then gets it back to Brown. Brown kicks it out to Cody Ballard for the straight on three. Gets that one to fall, Cody Ballard. Good shot by Cody Ballard. I know he wants to get going right now. <laughs> Ball quickly up ahead to Bedford. Can't get that one to fall. Todd Brown quickly up ahead to Cody Ballard and five straight points there for Cody Ballard. As they now have the Condors, a 47 to 41 lead with 2.30 left to go here in the second. Condors are taking charge right now in this second quarter. Tyshawn Johnson with the step back after missing a few shots, he's able to get that one to fall. Right. 
Todd Brown with Fuller now on him. He's able to get the step back three. Gets that one to fall. Todd Brown feeling it from three today. Little James Harden step back right there. I'm surprised they don't call that as like a travel or something. I'm still trying to figure that out. Nonetheless, Todd Brown was able to get it to fall. Tyshawn Johnson drove, and Kelvin Fuller is there to clean things up. 130 left here in the first half, 50-45 lead for the Columbus Condors. A.J. Davis looking to drive. Can't get the layup to fall. Watching Fuller for the first time, you can just see how he averages the amount of rebounds that he's averages. He's always in the right place at the right time, and he just got that rebound for the putback on the last bucket for the uh, Dayton flight. And uh, looks like we will have the mandatory timeout here in the second quarter as uh, Aaron Jackson was going to get called for that loose ball foul. That'll be his second of the game. Columbus really turning it on here in the second quarter, down by seven at the half. Now they have a five-point lead, or I'm sorry, down by seven at the end of the first quarter. Now have a five-point lead with 120 to go here in the second. Yeah, and I think what you're seeing is that, once again, the Condors have a bench. They have players that can come off the bench, give the starters some spells. But at the same time, the starters have been playing very well this second quarter. As they kind of started off slow in the first quarter, they're starting off real good this second quarter. And you got players like Cody Ballard coming in, Ty Brown coming in, making good shots, A.J. Davis coming in, making good shots. So everything looks good for the Condors right now. So see if they can hold on to this lead. And because of that Aaron Jackson foul, that will send Patrick White to the line for two. See if Patrick White can get on the scoreboard in the stat book here today. First one is up and in. Gets both of them to fall. Todd Brown. With a nice, another nice little step back against Fuller. Couldn't get that one to fall. Fuller ends up with the ball in his hands. Long strides quickly coming the other way and Brett McKnight was able to get in position and take the charge as Fuller was trying to go all the way. And as you see, Fuller finds his way to get the ball, but he was just not in position to get that call for him, as Brett McKnight was. Just trying to get some things, some Perspiration cleaned up on the floor here. Fifty to forty-seven lead for the Condors. Just under a minute left to play here in this first half. Jordan Bedford all over Todd Brown. Ends up getting the ball to McKnight. McKnight with a nice behind the back with Sherin guarding him, but McKnight's able to finish. Nice take behind the back and finish for Brett McKnight. Jordan Bedford with the ball in his hands. Todd Brown guarding him. Nice little spin move. Can't get the layup to fall. A lot of guys going for that ball. Ends up in the hands of uh, Todd Brown and quickly up ahead to A.J. Davis for the easy two-handed flush. Almost a pick by A.J. Davis right there. 15 seconds left here in the half. Shot clock is off. Nice find there by Tyrell Means to uh, Patrick White. Uh, officials timeout saying that 11.3. 
should be on the clock instead of 8.9. Ball inbounded to A.J. Davis. Nice little find to McKnight. And Shuren is it going to get that foul called against him? As that is Shuren's second foul, and that'll send Brett McKnight to the line for two. Brett McKnight goes to the foul shot. Brett McKnight with eight points in this first half so far, looking to get into double digits on these free throws. And first one is just off the mark. I might have jinxed him on that one, I'm not sure. <laughs> 6.8 seconds left. Second one for McKnight is up and gets that one to fall. Tyshawn Johnson with the ball in his hands. Trying to get that last second shot in, is able to quickly the other way. The ball is inbounded and that will do it for the first half as Columbus Condors down 29-22 after one period. Now has a 55 to 51 lead here in the first half. We will go ahead and take a short break and be back right after this. This is TBL Basketball here on the Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675.
Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. 
Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Welcome back here to the Ohio Sports center where uh, we have our TBL matchup for the day with the Dayton Flight and the Columbus Condors. Date, I'm sorry, Columbus has the lead here at fa- halftime 55-52. to 52. Seth Donahoe alongside Randall Smith. And Randall, it was a, it w- it was a very f- settling first quarter and then a fast-paced second quarter. Most definitely. I think the Dayton Flight, you know, they're a, they're a fast-paced team to begin with. They play a lot of fast-paced basketball, but on the other end, you have the Columbus Condors who like to play a half-court game but can also get up and down the court. So in the beginning, you've seen the Condors kind of ruffle, uh, you know, with getting that going back and forth game going, but they kind of settled it down and then took the lead in the second quarter. Yeah. So uh, just to look at some stats here, uh, leading all scorers for the Dayton flight is Tyshawn Johnson with 16, said that he's averaging about 24 points per game, and he's really showcasing his skills here in uh, in that first half alongside Tyrell Means with eight and Kelvin Fuller with seven. Uh, I, I think Kelvin uh, n- not able to get some easy baskets that he thought that he might get um, around the bucket. Uh, defense by Columbus has been uh, persistent, and uh, they've really made it tough for him to score. One thing I'm seeing is that he is getting rebounds, like he averages 17 rebounds a game, but he's not getting a whole bunch of buckets like we're like used to seeing with him averaging 17 points a game. I think with the Condors, they're just they have a deep bench and they have a lot of scorers who can put the ball in the bucket. Um, Johnson is probably like the only one who's really scoring for the flight right now. Haven't seen a lot of Sheeran play a lot. He's another second leading scorer, averaging 17. But um, other than Johnson, and then you have uh, Tyrell Means, he's doing some scoring too. But just looking at it, 
the Condors are looking like they're the ones who's getting the ball in the bucket the most. And you were talking about that depth for Columbus. Um, only the highest scoring uh, player for the Condors has nine, but it's three of them. Richie Gordon, Brett McKnight, and Todd Brown all has nine. So, it, it, you know, Todd Brown really stepping up here, uh, especially knocking down a lot of good-looking threes. And he's one of those other guys coming off the bench, putting the ball in the bucket. Um, A.J. Davis is another one who's putting the ball in the bucket. So looking forward to seeing what the Condors can do in this second half. Kind of looking for Shuren to get some um, points and see if he can get going this second half. But if they don't get a stop on uh, Johnson, it's going to be a tough second half for the Condors. All right. Well, we will go ahead and take another short break. And when we come back, we will have the third quarter ready to go. This is TBL Basketball here on the Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Welcome back in here to the Ohio Sports Comp where the Columbus Condors have a 55-52 to 52 lead over the Dayton flight. As we had talked about at the half, Tyshawn Johnson leading all scores for the Dayton flight uh, with 16 points. Kelvin Fuller with 7, Tyrell Means with 8. And the Columbus Condors, three players leading the team, all with nine points, Richie Gordon, Todd Brown, and Brett McKnight. Uh, we've really seen Brett McKnight get a lot of his baskets from around the basket. He does like to step out and shoot those threes uh, from time to time, but he seems to be very effective here around the rim. I think Brett McKnight's bread and butter is the low post. He's not as tall as um, some of the guys on the flight, like Fuller and um, uh, McGowan, but... As you can see right there, <laughs> he can flush the ball with the best of it. And not sure what that miscommunication was by Dayton as Cody Ballard just threw it full court. <laughs> and Richie Gordon talking to the fans up here in the stands. <laughs> as a lot of people love that. But there's only one person back on defense with two players as Myron McGowan gets that shot to fall. But as we talked about with Brett McKnight in the low post, he's not as tall as some of the Dayton flight players, even some of his teammates, but he's probably just as big or bigger than a lot of these teammates. And, oh my goodness, Cody Ballard just finding the big man here to start the second half as he finds Richie Gordon for a wide open dunk. And hey, I say go with what you know. If you can get down there and get those low post buckets, why not get them? Jordan Bedford's long two is off. A.J. Davis with the board. Cody Ballard looking to get his team involved. Brett McKnight thought about the three. Got McGowan in the air. Ends up taking it. He'll finish around Kelvin Fuller. Looks like the Condors are starting out fast this second half. You'll be surprised with a couple good flushes to do for a team's confidence. And... Uh, Two of those three leading scorers entering the second half were the two big men, Richie Gordon and Brett McKnight, really trying to get them started here, it seems like, to start the second half. Tyshawn Johnson takes a long three and gets the friendly roll. And as you can see, they started out, the Condors started out with Jalen Benton on Tyshawn Johnson. So like I was saying earlier, you want to get some speed on him. You want to get somebody who can guard him and play him up close and tight. Richie Gordon will pull up and take the long range two. Can't get that one to fall. McGowan the other way, kicks it out to Means in the corner. Rattles in and out, but Bedford's there able to clean things up. Nice take by Bedford.
Ball ends up in the hands of Richie Gordon. And a uh, little bit of a late whistle. Maybe Richie Gordon might have sold that a little bit as he uh, went falling out on the baseline. It was definitely a late whistle by the refs. And I think that's what uh, Fuller is talking about, discussing it with the refs. And uh, that foul going on Kelvin Fuller, that will be his third. Sending Richie Gordon to the line for a two. First one is up and good. And is able to knock down both of them. So the two big men getting uh, involved early here for the Condors as McGowan will end up pulling up for a three. That one's no good. Ballard with the rebound quickly the other way, gets it up ahead to Davis. Davis will end up taking it himself and two defenders around Davis as he was going up against. AJ Davis going up against two defenders. Ball inbounded to Jalen Ben. Finds a cutting Richie Gordon. That one just slipped through his hands. Couldn't get a handle on that one. I think Richie Gordon was thinking about the flush. Joe Ballard to take it all the way. Richie Gordon almost got his hands on that one, but Joe Ballard's able to get just enough air under that one to be able to drop that one in. A little bit of a mismatch down there. Oh, and the ball last touched by A.J. Davis. Looks like to start this third period, both these teams are, uh, I guess you could say, kind of out there. It looks like they're just having a little fun. You know, uh, this is, uh, you know, every game does matter here in this TBL league. But uh, maybe a little bit of sloppiness from both teams to start off as Bedford takes a long two. It looks like they're just going back and forth with the shots, you know, see who can knock one down. You take one, I make one. I come back down and I make one. And, you know, it's, it's what you see in the beginning of the games. You see it in the beginning of the first quarter. You see it in the beginning of the third quarter. Uh, and I think both teams need to just get settled down. The Condors came out hot in the first and second half. So, you know, we'll see if we can get some things just settled down a little bit. Boo Osborne, who had started this game, didn't start here to start the second half. Jalen Benton did, but now Boo Osborne checks in for him. A.J. Davis picked up his first foul on that offensive charge. Their last possession, Tyson Johnson with the ball, guarded by Osborne. Tyson Johnson pretty crafty with his handles. And Tyrell Means is able to clean things up there around the rim. Even though Tyshawn Johnson's not that big of a player, he's very physical. He, he gets physical down there. He doesn't mind going down there with those tall trees and taking it up over the bucket. Osborne with a nice step back. That one got halfway down before coming back out. Cody Ballard gets the offensive board. And Myron McGowan not happy with that one as he's going to pick up his fourth foul. I think some of the players on the Dayton flight bench was looking for the flop. I don't know. This game has gotten physical over the last two quarters. <laughs> Cody Ballard will go to the line for two. Five points in the first half. Five points came on back-to-back -back buckets as his first point or first free throw is good. Had a three-pointer, straight on three-pointer, and then a fast break layup. And is able to knock down both of them. It always seems like the free throws are what kind of gets the game to slow down a little bit. So maybe you were looking forward to see it to slow down just a little bit right here. Troy Cantrell, who ends up uh, checking in for McGowan after he picked up his fourth foul. 
That three was off the mark by Bedford. Cody Ballard will end up pulling up for three. That one's just short. Bedford with the defensive rebound quickly the other way. Richie Gordon was able to stop him. A lot of players wanted to travel, but he missed it. Brett McKnight with the ball. Nice dish to Todd Brown. Don't think Todd Brown was quite ready for how fast that ball was coming in. As you can see, the Condors coach over there yelling. I think he wanted a defense in three seconds. And he, and he did get it as Bedford was hanging out down there, setting up camp. So Richie Gordon will knock down the technical free throw. And it will stay with the Condors. And uh, I think that was Brett McKnight who was able to knock down that shot. Tyshawn Johnson tried to split the defense and ends up getting fouled by Brett McKnight, which will be his second. Khalil McCormick coming in for Cody Ballard and Aaron Jackson in for Brett McKnight. 7.08 left here in the third. Condors with a 68 to 63 lead. Tyshawn Johnson looking for a shot. Ends up getting by Boo Osborne, but Aaron Jackson was there to defend, but Tyshawn Johnson took the contact and was able to finish against the taller Aaron Jackson. Once again, just that toughness, just that physical strength that he has. He doesn't look like he's that strong of a player, but as you can see, he is. Richie Gordon making sure he stays with it and gets the put back off of his missed layup. Means with the ball guarded by Todd Brown. Hands it off to Bedford, then over to Ballard in the corner. Nice poke from behind there by Richie Gordon. And we will have our first mandatory timeout here in the third quarter, 6-19. Left to go, 70 to 65, Columbus Condors lead. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're enjoying this broadcast and would like to learn how it's done behind the scenes, check out the Ohio Media School located in Columbus. If you're interested in radio production, TV broadcasting, or digital media, the Ohio Media School is the choice for you. Visit Ohio Media School at beonair.com slash Columbus or call 614-655-5250. You can also find the Ohio Media School on all your favorite social media. Ohio Media School, we change lives. And Randall, after the uh, little bit of a sloppy start to this third quarter, looks like the teams have finally settled in. Looks like they settled in pretty good. Both teams came out playing a little sloppy. Well, the Condors kind of came out, you know, excited. They get scored the first three buckets, two slams, and then they got a little sloppy in the, towards, you know, right now. Um, but both teams need to just settle down and just play basketball and kind of cut down on the turnovers. So at last possession, Richie Gordon was able to knock it out of the hands of Joe Ballard. So Dayton inbounds it to Troy Cantrell. Troy Cantrell, big physical guy. As he kicks it out to Ballard, that one's no good. Boo Osborne with the defensive rebound. Gets it over to McCormick and Richie Gordon and Joe Ballard are going at it down low and uh, Ballard is gonna get called for the hold. So that would be his first. Richie Gordon able to use his length, especially not only his size, but his length when he's able to post up down low. Good defense there by Joe Ballard as Boo Osborne able to get around him and he could have finished the layup. Oh my goodness, but Khalil McCormick was able to finish things up. Boo Osborne almost put, well he did put Joe Ballard on skates, he just couldn't finish it. 
Yeah, and it's like one of those things, man. It was a great play, but it didn't, didn't go down. Joe Ballard, he had great defense, but eventually Boo Osborne found the gap. Tyrell Means loses the ball out of bounds, and it'll come back to Columbus. Quickly the other way, Todd Brown with the ball in his hands. Looking for an isolation against the taller, more physical Cantrell. Just so much talent on this Columbus Condors team. Their record doesn't do them any justice. They're one and two right now, but man, just looking over at their bench, there's so much talent on this team. Troy Cantrell is going to get called for that foul. Cantrell is 6'6 six, six forward, but really strong physical guy. Boo Osborne's going to end up pulling up for three. That one's just off the mark. And Richie Gordon will be called for that foul. I think Richie Gordon knew in his mind. He knew what guy, he was doing. This guy is getting ready to go running down the court. Richie Best. Gordon just wasn't prepared to get down there with him. Right. Best to just take the foul. That's Richie Gordon's second foul. And uh, Tyshawn Johnson just a, basically a wide open lane to the basket. 72-67. Oh, good defense there by Means. It looked like it was going to get over to Aaron Jackson. Tyshawn Johnson. Throws it up for Joe Ballard as he elevates. I don't think McCormick even saw it coming. <laughs> Joe Ballard, a, a quick athletic guy. Richie Gordon then kicks it out to McCormick. McCormick will shoot that three. That one's off the mark. Boo Osborne with a dump down to Aaron Jackson. Nice find by Boo Osborne on that offensive rebound. Great find by Boo Osborne. 74-69 lead now for the Condors. 4-10 left to play in the third quarter. Means has the ball. Cantrell comes to set a screen, then backs away. Means looks like he was possibly thinking about putting Richie Gordon on a poster, but ends up taking the layup. As Richie Gordon will pick up his third foul. And from where we're at, he doesn't look 6-2, but he is definitely a high flyer. We've seen a couple good dunks out of him today. Tyrell Means, that is. And uh, Brett McKnight will come in for Richie Gordon as he picks up back-to-back -back fouls, giving him three. And Means will go to the line and try and convert the three-point play. Josh Webster and uh, Patrick White checking in for Dayton. Also alongside Brett McKnight, Cody Ballard checks back into the game. Ballard, the one controlling the offense, trying to find McKnight. Does. Nice spin move there by McKnight. That layup or floater is just short. And uh, they're going to get, say, Aaron Jackson's foot was on the line as he was trying to save that one. Yeah, it looks like he was already out of bounds on that. Tyshawn Johnson comes the other way. He'll end up taking the three as Cody Ballard just couldn't get around that Joe Ballard screen. Yeah, you got to get around that screen on him. You cannot give him an inch. Cody Ballard wants the ball against the smaller Tyshawn. Ends up kicking it out to McKnight. McKnight will take that three. That one's off the mark. Tyshawn Johnson with another three. That one's off. And Past couple possessions for Columbus, it looks like they're just kind of settling for some threes. Yeah, it looks like they need to get back down to, like I said, to their half-court offense. That's where they're the best at. That's where their bread and butter is at. And the past cut, like the past two possessions, they got it down to McKnight. McKnight couldn't finish that layup. They got it to Ballard. Ballard ended up kicking it out to McKnight. It just doesn't look like there's a lot of movements on this offense. And that pass is intercepted by Webster. He comes quickly the other way for, tries to throw the alley-oop to Joe Ballard, but that one's just a little bit off the mark. And 
And it looks like we will have another media timeout. Day in flight. Able to tie this game up here in the third quarter at 74 with 2.50 left. And day in flight, especially Tyshawn Johnson scoring uh, 10 points here in this third quarter alone. He scored 10 in the first quarter as well. Uh, really bringing, uh, they were only down, I believe it was three or four only at halftime, but Tyshawn Johnson, is he's really showing his skill sets here today. Yeah, and, and I, what I seen was Co Cody Ballard get caught under that screen. Mm -hmm. um, things like that, that's like, you know, gold for Tyshawn Johnson. If you get him in those open shots, he's going to take that shot. It's like a Stephen Curry type player with like an Allen Iverson type of go to the bucket. But he's a physical player, but he's not that big in size. You just, you might have to double him going into this third and fourth quarter. As we said, there had been a couple good looks as McKnight had that last three, and Cody Ballard went to post up Tyshawn Johnson uh, with the size advantage there, but, you know, didn't really take advantage of it. They've gotten some good looks, just haven't been able to get anything, so we'll see what they can do here now out of this timeout. Ballard throws it over to Brown. McKnight setting the screen for Brown. Todd Brown gets it down low to McKnight. McKnight's going to use his size and strength against the smaller Patrick White to be able to get his two points. And that's what they need to keep going to. You know, Brett McKnight, he has that strength down low. Uh, nobody's going to stop him on the Dayton flight team if he gets that ball down that low. And uh, Joe Ballard with a wide open two-handed flush. Joe Ballard kind of coming alive. We see that he's more of the... Uh, Explosive around the rim type of player. Solid defender too. Very solid defender. Cody Ballard takes a long three. That one's off the mark. Patrick White quickly will come the other way and he'll just take it all the way with nobody even trying to stop him. It's that transition offense when they can get up and down the court like that. Not good for the Condor. And uh, we're going to get a traveling violation. I always find it interesting how the refs on the other side of the floor can call some fouls or, you know, some traveling violations or, or whatever the case may be. But the one standing right next to them don't call it. Doesn't call it. <laughs> I think sometimes the refs are getting caught up in the game as well. Tyshawn Johnson finds a cutting Patrick White and giving Dayton the 80 to 76 lead here with a minute five left to go here in the third. Defensive intensity really picking up here over the past few minutes for Dayton. Brett McKnight guarded by Joe Ballard. Nice take, couldn't get anything to fall. Cody Ballard gets the loose ball and is able to find his two points. I think we want to see the uh, Condors get Cody Ballard more involved. He's taken a couple shots that probably he shouldn't have taken, but let's see if he can get involved a little bit more. A lot of fans wanted to travel on that one, but uh, Patrick White, or I'm sorry, Tyrell Means ends up finding Josh Webster for his first two points of the game. Todd Brown trying to find a lane. Now here's Cody Ballard again with a size disadvantage. Ends up getting his layup to go against the smaller Tyshawn Johnson. You see right there, that's the advantage that the Condors have on the offensive side of the board going against Tyshawn Johnson. You have a bigger, stronger Cody Ballard that can get that ball down in that post. Five seconds left to go here in this third. Tyshawn Johnson trying to find a lane. Good defense there by Brett McKnight and uh, Cody Ballard. And after three quarters, the Dayton Flight have an 82 to 80 lead over the Columbus Condors. We'll, we will go ahead and take a short break. This is TBL Basketball here on the Score on Air Network.
Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at the Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Back in here at the Ohio Sports Center where the day and flight have an 82 to 80 lead here at the start of the fourth quarter. Tyshawn Johnson leading the way and all scores for the day and flight with 26. And uh, looks like Tyrell Means has 12. And for the Columbus Condors, the two big men still going at it strong. Richie Gordon with 16 and Brett McKnight with 17. Seth Donahoe alongside Randall Smith Jr. And Richie Gordon's able to get his layup to fall. And as you see with that bucket right there by Richie Gordon, as you said, McKnight has 17. Richie Gordon has 19, I believe now. That's where they're going to win this game at. Um, as you can see, they, the flight just went and scored a bucket down low. The flighter, I think, they might be actually a little bigger than the Condors. I'm not for sure. But the bread and butter for the Condors is that down low post play. Yeah, Brett McKnight is uh, really taking advantage of that today. He has 17. And with that last possession, Richie Gordon has uh, 18 now. And Patrick White was able to finish that layup as A.J. Davis fouled him. So he will go to line and try and finish the three-point play, and which he does. 87 to 82 lead. Kind of want to see uh, A.J. Davis get going uh, as he just takes this shot right here. He's going to say, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> Richie Gordon against the smaller Tyshawn Johnson. As Tyshawn Johnson picks up his second foul. As I said, Tyshawn Johnson leading all scorers with 26 through three quarters, averaging 24 on the year, really having himself a good game. Yeah, he's one of those guys, you know, at 24.5 points a game. I can see it, you know, he's uh, inside, outside. But one thing about it is he's getting caught up in a lot of mismatches. I don't know if they're like in a 3-2 zone or he's getting caught up in some of these mismatches down low, but he doesn't need to get in those kind of mismatches. You need to keep him up top. Richie Gordon gets both of them to fall. Cody Ballard also in double digits with 11 for the Condors. As the flight have an 87-84 lead now. Ty Tyler Tyrell Means oh, with a nice, able to, Aaron Jackson was able to save it. A lot of... A lot of a, a lot of things happened right there on that possession that happened very quickly. Yeah, it looked like Means was able to save it as he went up for the bucket. It kind of bounced on his back. He got it and almost got that pass off. And uh, I'm not sure if Boo Osborne or Richie Gordon picked up that foul, but they're going to say that uh, Tyrell. I'm sorry. They're going to say that. Uh, yeah, Tyrell Means was held as he was trying to get that ball. As he was trying to get that ball, Aaron Jackson. Uh, Tried saving the ball from going out of bounds, but it ended up just bouncing off of Means, who was on the floor, just at the right, at the right angle. You know, sometimes you come into these semi-pro games and you wonder what the competition is going to be like, but there is no drop-off in this competition. I mean, there's players on both sides of the court. Um, there's, you know, very talented players on both teams. This is my second game watching the Condors play. There's a lot of talent out here in this semi-pro basketball TBL league. 
Josh Webster was left wide open for a three as he was able to knock it down. Ball down low to Richie Gordon, finds a cutting A.J. Davis. As he was going up, got that ball poked loose, so it will stay down here with the Condors. Ball poked away from Boo Osborne. Tyrell Means will just take it the other way. Tyrell Means, a very quick player. I think if you're the Condors, you probably want to get a timeout right now before this game gets a little bit out of hand. Condors being outscored 9-4 to four here in this fourth quarter. Todd Brown takes the mid-range jumper. That one gets in and out. Aaron Jackson being held the whole time, and he ends up getting the putback to fall. And I believe that one is going to go on McGowan, which would be his fifth foul. In comes Shuren. Not for sure why we haven't seen a lot of Shuren. It's a 17 point score. Maybe the flight has a little bit of something up their sleeve with Shuren coming in. Possibly. Sharon hasn't seen very many minutes in this game, but Aaron Jackson is at the line to try and convert the three-point play. Just off the front iron. And it looks like uh, the Condors are in some kind of zone here as McGowan's going to take a long two and rattles that one home. Todd Brown able to find Brad McKnight. Great pass from Todd Brown. Great pass by Tom Brown as McKnight finishes that bucket. Looking to see a whole lot of McKnight in these last nine minutes of the game. 94-88 lead here. Shuren with a deep three. He's able to get that one to fall, and that's what Shuren can do if you leave him wide open. And that's what I was thinking about. He's going to come in in this fourth quarter. They're going to look for him to knock down some shots. And look, he came in and knocked down the first three-point shot. Going to get a timeout here. Called by the Condors as they are down right now, 97 to 88 with 8.57 left to go here in the fourth. And Randall, if the Condors want to win this game, what do they have to do? Well, I think they need to go down to the post. I think Richie Gordon, he needs a breather right now, number one. But as you can see, Brett McKnight, he took his breather. He needs to come in, make good shots, play defense, and like I said, get Richie Gordon a, a little break. Um, I would possibly think about getting Co Cody Ballard, you know, involved in a little bit more. Start looking for Aaron Jackson a little bit more because he has a little bit of a hot hand. But, yeah, keep feeding the ball down low. Condors being outscored 15 to 8 here in this fourth quarter. Defensive intensity really picked up there in the second half of that third quarter and here into the fourth quarter from the Dayton flight. Condors have to respond to that physicality and make sure that they take care of the ball. Turnovers can be costly. It is a uh, only a nine-point game. But you want to make sure that you take care of the ball here in this final quarter. McKnight finds Ballard. Then gives it back to the cutting McKnight. And as McKnight was going up, he's going to get fouled by number five, Josh Webster, which will be his second foul, sending McKnight to the line for and you, two. And you know one thing that we, we haven't seen, and one thing that I don't know, if, I'm sure you've noticed this, Tyshawn Johnson has been sitting on the bench this whole time that the flight has went up by nine points. Webster and Patrick White providing some good minutes off the bench. Uh, this entire game is McKnight not able to capitalize on the first one. Second one is up and gets that one to fall. 
97-89, 8.40 left to go here in the fourth. Dayton Flight have the lead. Bedford with the ball. He'll end up pulling up for three. Gets that one to fall. And man, all of the Dayton Flight are feeling it right now here in the fourth quarter. AJ Davis with the ball. I think they're going to get a push off on yep. AJ. Yes, that will be the call. AJ Davis, a little too physical. Once again, as I had said earlier, the ref on the other side of the floor had called that one, but I think that one was a little more obvious. Yeah, it was definitely obvious. Especially when you got some pounds on the guy you're pushing off as well. <laughs> Bedford with the ball in his hands. He'll end up pulling up again, and he gets that three to fall. Jordan Bedford not afraid to pull it. As they're up 103-89 right now with eight minutes left. Todd Brown with that three, he wanted a call but nothing happened. And Jordan Bedford ends up finding a Myron McGowan who's able to flush that one home. And you can just see all of the momentum has shifted Dayton's way. Definitely has shifted. I think a lot, of, you know, the Condors are a little winded too right now. Dayton has definitely played a fast-paced game this entire game. And, and one thing with the Condors that I'm not a fan of is they shrunk that bench. Uh, they shrunk that bench the whole second half. Now as we're looking into the, sec the second half in the fourth quarter with seven minutes left, um, the, the Condors look a little winded, and, they're, and the, the flight's leading score has not been in on this whole run. So as we see Tyshawn Johnson probably get ready to come back into the game, I'm just looking, looking to see him come and add to this lead if the Condors don't get it together on defense. Dayton Flight with a 16-point lead, 105 to 89. The intensity has picked up for the Dayton Flight, and if you're the Condors, you just got to make sure that you stay with it. There's still plenty of time left in this game. As I said, 7:36, down 16. They just got to make sure that they stick to their game plan and they really have to buckle down and try and slow down the transition offense. And it's going to be hard because this is what it looks like that Dayton Flight likes to do is get up and down the court. Ball gets down low to Richie Gordon. Find, ends up finding Todd Bound, then to Boo Osborne out there. And as Boo Osborne was going up, Myron McGown fouled him. And that is, uh, that will be it for Myron McGowan as he has now gotten his sixth foul of the game. Sending Boo Osborne to the line here for two. This might be what you need. You've been in a little bit of a scoring drought. Go ahead and get some easy, get two easy points here at the free throw line. Get your confidence and hopefully your teammates see that ball go in the basket and they gain some confidence too. And just try to find a way to slow down the Dayton flight. Um, as you see Fuller getting ready to come back in. What? You. Yeah. Boo Osborne cannot connect on his first one. Kelvin Fuller checking back in for the flight. Osborne not able to get any points from the free throw line there on that one, but ends up getting the basket and he'll just end up getting uh, two points the hard way, I guess. Yeah, Boo Osborne has that look in his eye like he's not willing to give up just yet. He's playing defense And, as well. uh, yep. Josh Webster was trying to get around uh, the defensive pressure by Boo Osborne. Looks like he got beat for a second. Then when Boo got in front of him, Webster threw that forearm out. So Webster will pick up his third foul of the game. Condors come the other way. Todd Brown, he'll just end up pulling up from three. He gets that three to fall. Todd Brown. 
Good shot by Todd Brown. All of his points coming from behind the arc. Todd Brown with 12 now. 12 points off the bench as well. 12 right? points off the bench as well. All three-pointers. That three rattles in and out for uh, Patrick White. Sue Osborne ends up kicking it out to Todd Brown. Todd's trying to find a lane. He'll take it all the way. Can't get it to fall. As Patrick White picks up his first foul. And uh, I believe we'll send Todd Brown to the line for two. And I'd say it looks like the Condors now have uh, probably their best lineup on the floor right now. Um, no, including A.J. Davis, who's on the bench but could come in for anybody at any time. Right, right, right. And this is what you need if you're, uh, if you're the Condors. Brown's able to get his first one to fall to cut the lead to 10. Now, I'm not a coach. I've only coached youth basketball, but if I was coaching the Condors, I would think about giving uh, Richie Jenkins, uh, Richie Gordon, a little bit of spell, maybe bring in A.J. Davis. Yes, but I'm sure a, I'm sure Richie Gordon uh, wouldn't be a fan of that as he uh, he certainly loves to be on the floor at all times. Lead now to single digits, 105-96, a flight lead. Jordan Bedford trying to find something, ends up kicking out to Shuren. That three's just short. Boo Osborne with the defensive rebound. He'll get it up ahead to Ballard. And good hands there by uh, Josh Webster as he's able to knock that one out of bounds as Ballard tried to get it down low to McKnight. And I, know, I know we've mentioned this many times, but Brett McKnight is one of those guys that is able to step out and shoot it, but really he's done all of his work around the basket today. Right. Ballard ends up getting it to Gordon, who's able to get around Fuller, and Richie Gordon gets himself a layup and cuts the lead to seven now. 105-98, 5.45 left to go here in the fourth. And you knew that the Columbus Condors would not go down without a fight. Oh, for sure. For sure. They're not going to go down without a fight at all. They're a scrappy bunch. All these players hate to lose. I know that for sure. And, and that's going to be a travel on Kelvin Fuller. He thought that uh, Brett McKnight had kind of put it, looked like he kind of put his arms around his head. But uh, Kelvin Fuller had lowered his shoulder to put himself in that position. Richie Gordon wants the ball again. Ends up getting it over. Great pass there by Ballard as he's able to find Gordon as Fuller was fronting him. And no one was behind Richie Gordon for the help side defense. Kind of taking a couple off balance shots, but he's making them. And Jordan Bedford, his last three shots have all been threes and they've all went in. He's got nine points in this fourth quarter. And a good smart foul there by Brett McKnight as he, uh, yes, just a common foul on Brett McKnight as Shuren was looking to pass the ball up ahead to, there was, it looks like there was three Dayton flight players down there, but as Shuren was trying to get it up, McKnight fouled him. They said no clear path foul, just a common foul. Looks like Cody Ballard's arguing with the ref. He feels like he should have been called for the foul. Not he should have been called for a foul, but a foul should have been called for him. For him. Yes. Cody Ballard is all over Tyshawn Johnson. Jordan Bedford with the hot hand. He's able to cut to the basket and get that layup to fall. Looked like he just elevated himself with that basketball as he cuffed it and went up with it. Jordan Bedford really gaining his confidence here in this fourth quarter. Todd Brown, nice little crossover. He's able to take it, and he's able to finish, and he'll go to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Good take by Todd Brown, Jr. That foul will go against Tyshawn Johnson, his third. Condors down eight right now, 110-102. 
with 4.23 to go here in the fourth quarter. And we're going to get a timeout here by the Columbus Condors. As we'd said, the Columbus Condors would not go down without a fight. They are a scrappy bunch, but they really settled in. And they, if, before they started going on this little run, they had opportunities, but they weren't capitalizing. Now we've seen these past few possessions, they have been capitalizing and getting points. Right, and then, you know, with this shot clock that the professionals have, you know, there's a lot of time left. You got 423, down eight points, not a lot. Uh, you can get right back into this game in a couple possessions. So I'm looking forward to um, seeing the Condors come back and finish strong. Not going to say they're going to come out with the W, but they're going to fight in the rest of this game. There's a lot of time left. Shuren, Ballard, Johnson, Webster, and Bedford out on the floor for the day in flight. Ballard, Osborne, Brown, Gordon, and McKnight out there for the Condors. Todd Brown finished his layup, so he will go to the line and try and convert the three-point play. which is just off the mark. Clutch time, you have to be able to not turn the ball over and knock down free throws. Richie Gordon looking to take on the challenge of Tyshawn Johnson. He, Johnson tried throwing it up to Ballard, but Ballard wasn't ready. Here comes Osborne, who then gets it to Brown. Brown with the reverse layup. Good steal by Boo Osborne playing the lanes. Cody Ballard all up in Jordan Bedford and Ballard not happy with that call. That's gonna be his second foul. As he knows Bedford has the hot hand right now for the flight in this fourth quarter. Wants to make sure he gives him no space. And that's just Josh Webster kept the deep, caught the defense sleeping as he was able to get to the rim uncontested. Slice that defense apart. Can't allow him to come down and, and, and slice the defense like that. Boo Osborne will take a three. Nice three by Boo Osborne. A shot by Boo Osborne. He's keeping them in this game right now. And as you said, he had that look in his eye. And that'll be an offensive foul against Matt Shuren. As Richie Gordon was guarding him, and Sharon just tried to go right through him. And the lead is down to five. 112 107. Dayton flight lead with 314 left here to go in the fourth. But back to what you said, Boo Osborne had that look in his eye that he was not happy with the way he or the, his team was playing. And now he's kind of taken it upon himself to help get his team back into this game, which they have, and try and find a win. Yeah, and you can see it, and, not, and it's not to discredit any of the other Condor players, because obviously all of them probably want to win. I know they want to win, not yes. probably, but you can just see it, you know, in Boo's eyes that he wants to win. He wants to win bad. Yes. Three minutes left to go here in the fourth. Boo Osborne tried to get it to Richie Gordon, but Sharon was there for the help side defense that time. Sharon kicks it out to Johnson. Johnson will slow it down as they have a five-point lead with 2.50 left. Brett McKnight out here guarding him. Bedford ends up getting the ball in his hands. He'll take a three, and Bedford with another three-pointer. Bedford is coming along in this second half. He's playing real tough. 14 points in this fourth quarter alone. Todd Brown ends up taking it to the basket. Can't get the basket to fall, but he will go to the line for two. As it's getting hot, hotter and hotter in here on this basketball game, I'm starting to feel the air condition up here. It was hot a little early. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Ballard picks up his second foul. Todd Brown's first one is up and good. Todd Brown coming alive in this fourth quarter. He has 10 points now in the fourth quarter alone. Oh, 
Second one is up and gets the roll. 115, 109, 232 remaining. Webster will bring the ball up the floor, gets it out to Bedford. Bedford feeling it, that one's short. Todd Brown with the ball. Trying to find somebody, Richie Gordon ends up getting it in his hands. Down to McKnight, help comes over. Webster lost, lost it, his foot was on the line and it will come the Condor's way. Costly turnovers. Six point lead here for the flight. Two minutes now left to play in the game. Ballard trying to find McKnight. Gets it into McKnight. Gets the turnaround to fall. Brett McKnight with a nice turnaround. And that's what you're going to have to see as we went these went these minutes window down. We're going to have to see a lot of McMore and McKnight coming in. Tyshawn Johnson's able to get around the screen. And he'll get the running floater to go. That's Tyshawn Johnson's first points of the quarter. Boo Osborne trying to find something. Kicks it out to Todd Brown. Brown will shoot the three. Todd Brown with a three. Todd Brown is feeling it in this fourth quarter. I was not ready to see Todd Brown have this type of game that he's having, but he's having a great breakout game right now. 117, 114, 120 left in the fourth. Dayton Flight has the lead right now. McGowan ends up with the ball in his hands. That one's just short. Rebound there by Richie Gordon. It's a one possession game. Boo Osborne's going to end up taking it all the way. Can't get that one to fall. And it looks like they're going to get Boo Osborne with that foul. I don't know if that was a foul. This almost looks like he was try fighting for the ball and Johnson kind of fell. Todd Brown and Jordan Bedford going back and forth with each other with 14 points apiece here in this fourth quarter alone. Both players trying to do everything they can to help their team get the win. As Tyshawn Johnson will go to the line for two. 117, 114, just under a minute. 57.4 left to go in the game. Gets his first free throw to fall. Second one is up and good. Five-point lead for the flight. Have to capitalize here if you're the Condors. Ball gets down low to Ballard with Bedford guarding him. Kicks it out to McKnight. Good kick out to McKnight for three. That one's just strong. Richie Gordon there for the offensive rebound. Gets it up, and he's able to get the hand one. Richie Gordon. Nice bucket by Richie Gordon. I was going to say, you don't need a three right now as Brett McKnight took the three-point shot, but you didn't need a three-point shot. But Richie Gordon took the two-point bucket, grabbed the rebound, and has a chance for a three-point play. So it looks like they may possibly get the three points that they hoped for to begin with. Plenty of time left with the professional shot clock, 24-second shot clock. So if Richie Gordon can cash in on this free throw right here, you don't have to foul. You just have to play good defense. Right now it is 119 to 116. Condors down by three, 41.8 seconds. As Richie Gordon's and one shot is up and he converts to bring it to within two. Look for Tyshawn Johnson or Jordan Bedford to be able to, uh, to get a shot here for this team as both of them are up there at the top of the key. Ball ends up in the hands of Webster and the Dayton flight looks like they will call a timeout with 29.2 on the game clock and 11 seconds on the shot clock. Man, just when you thought that Dayton was running away, they had the momentum on their side, 
And we talked about it. The Condors are not going to go down without a fight. And if I'm the Condors coach right now, I'm telling them, watch out for the screens. Watch out for those lob passes that Johnson are trying to throw. But you obviously know they're going to look for Johnson or they're going to look for sure and for a shot. Johnson, Shuren, or Bedford, as I said. Bedford has 14 points here in the fourth quarter for the flight. But Todd Brown has 14 himself here for the Condors. Yeah, I didn't mention Bedford. Bedford's been playing. He's playing great this fourth quarter. Now, if I'm the flights coach, I'm telling him, go for a shot. Don't try to, you know, take this, this shot clock down. Set up a play and try to score. Flight will inbound the ball with 29 seconds left to go in the game, but 11 seconds on the shot clock. Flight up two right now. Condors need a defensive stop here. Webster will inbound the ball to Tyshawn Johnson. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Johnson trying to find his shot around the back. Not able to get it. Bedford ends up with the ball in his hands. Blue Osborne up ahead to Brett McKnight. McKnight is able to get that one to go, and it's a tie game here. That's what we've been saying this whole game, McKnight, McKnight, McKnight. And guess who that started with? Cody Ballard and Boo Osborne. Yes. Cody Ballard with the intense defense, and Boo Osborne wanting the ball in his hands, finds Brett McKnight on that transition offense. If you're the Condors right now, you just want to play defense. Don't overdo it, just play tough defense, and. You know, try to get a steal, but look, you know, at the least, you're going to overtime. So that layup, Brett McKnight ties it up here at 119. There was an official timeout. The clock did keep running, but they got that set to 15 seconds left. As you see Ballard and Johnson going back at it with each other. Looking for Johnson to take this shot right here. And the uh, ref was a little too quick. Richie Gordon seems to be in no hurry right now as he's cleaning up the floor. It looks like Tyrell Means is checking in for Joe Ballard. 15 seconds left, tie game. Flight will bring the ball up the floor. No shot clock right now. Shot clock is off. Flight can hold for this last second shot to, for a chance to win the game. Josh Webster will bring the ball up the floor. Tyrell Means out there with Myron McGowan, Tyshawn Johnson, and Joe Bedford. Josh Webster, guarded by Todd Brown, gets into a cutting Tyrell Means, but Means is going to get fouled by Brett McKnight. With 2.8 seconds left. Nobody on that Condors team happy with that call. as Tyrell Means will go to the line for two. That one's off the mark. But he still has one. One nineteen tied up here. A chance to take the lead for the flight. Tyrell Means, his second one is up. He's able to get that one out, oh. and Brett McKnight. That looked like a goaltending for sure. Now, now, if if I do remember when we had broadcasted some games from last year, in the basketball league, mm -hmm. if the ball is inside of the cylinder, you are allowed to knock it out. That's just one of the specifications that they have in this league, and I think that's what a lot of day and flight people are upset about. You don't see it very often, but if that is the case that it is allowed, Richie Gordon used the one time to play it perfectly. 
That's news to me. But you know what? In saying that, I think the, he wasn't going to make the shot. It didn't look like it was going in. Oh. But I think a lot of people don't understand that rule that you just talked about. Now, it is part of, like, uh, like an overseas, like the European basketball rules, or, or like, uh, I think they go by the FIBA okay. rules. Okay. Uh, in which they are allowed to do that. If the ball is inside, I believe if it's inside the rim, or the cylinder, I forget which, what it is. They are allowed to poke it to out. Knock it out, wow. A lot of people upset with that, but when that happened, you heard a lot of fans saying that that is legal. You're allowed to do that in this league. And Richie Gordon with one of the smartest plays of the day, I think. For sure it was. You could see Brett McKnight, he was tapping his head saying, hey, that's using your brain. Definitely using your brain. And uh, Brett McKnight is going to inbound the ball down here on the Condor side of the floor. And it looks like that they might try and find some kind of alley-oop for a quick tip in to try and end this game. Let's see if they, if they, you know, you got Richie going to the top of the key. Let's see if they bring him down for the alley-oop. 119, 119 tie game, but with 0.4 seconds left. McKnight to inbound it. Ballard, oh! Looked like they were going to say he got it off in time, but just off the front iron. Almost went in. And we get some free basketball here in Columbus. Overtime. 119, 119 at the end of regulation and not the ending that I was expecting. Not at all, but we, we wanted to see the Condors fought back, uh, fight back. We were wondering if they were going to fight back. We said they were going to fight back, and that's what they did to get this game into overtime. So they're looking at it like we have another life. And let's see, they got five minutes to go. Bedford, Jordan Bedford for the Dayton flight, leading the team with 14. In that quarter alone, he has 23 in the game. Tyshawn Johnson currently has 30. And Todd Brown finishing with a solid 14 points in that fourth quarter. He has 23. And Richie Gordon had 11 in that quarter for the Condors. And he has 27 for the Condors. Richie Gordon? Richie Gordon does. Richie Gordon's having a great game. Looking forward to seeing an exciting overtime right here. Five-minute overtime. Cody Ballard, Richie Gordon, Todd Brown, Boo Osborne, and Brett McKnight out there for the Condors. McGowan, Johnson, Webster, Bedford, and Means out there for the flight. Richie Gordon with the ball in his hands. He'll take his first shot. Nice kiss off the glass by Richie Gordon to get things started here in overtime. Nice shot by Richie Gordon. Means trying to find his shot with Gordon guarding him. Johnson guarded by Osborne. McGowan, he'll take a three. That one's off the mark. Poked out by Means. Tyshawn Johnson will take it all the way. Nothing called, but he still ends up with the ball. Webster now has it. He'll try a floater. That one's no good. And there's going to be a foul called on 23, I believe is what they said. McKnight, which would be his fifth. It almost looked like the ref was Getting ready to call a technical foul on Richie G Gordon. Dayton to inbound the ball up top. So the shot clock resets. Means with Gordon guarding him. McGowan kicks it cross court to Bedford. Bedford will take a long three. That one is on the money. Jordan Bedford carrying his fourth quarter performance over to overtime. You could just tell that was going in from the time it went off his hand. And, of course, we had the angle to see that that was right down the middle. For sure. Cody Ballard with Johnson guarding him. 
Cody Ballard not able to finish. Bedford with the ball. He's going to take a long range floater. Kisses that one off the glass and Bedford still going strong. 124-121 lead for the flight. 3.30 left to go. McKnight with the ball down low for the Condors. He's able to use his size and strength and get a basket here for the Condors. And, and like I said, I've been saying all game, once he gets down that low in the post, you can't stop him. McKnight brings it to within one, 124-123 now. 3.20, here to go in overtime. McGowan has the ball in his hands. He's going to take a long two. That one's off the mark. Nice strong rebound there by Todd Brown. Cody Ballard will bring it up, passes it up ahead to Boo Osborne. Looking down low for one of the big men. That's Richie Gordon. Richie Gordon using his size and strength and can't get the layup to fall, but he will go to the line for two to try and give the Condors the lead. That is another foul on Myron McGowan. Richie Gordon's been playing very well down low as well as Brett McKnight. But, you know, if you got those two guys playing down low, I, you know, I would keep feeding them. And I had misspoken earlier in the game. I thought that McGowan had picked up his sixth foul earlier, but that, in fact, was his sixth, sixth foul. So he will check out. Matt Shuren will check in. Just a couple seconds over three minutes here in overtime. Richie Gorin at the line shooting two. His first one is up and just strong. Have to be able to, we've said it before and we'll say it again, have to be able to make free throws and not turn the ball over in clutch time. Most definitely cannot have a lot of turnovers. Tyshawn Johnson has the ball in his hand. Good defense there by Gordon and Osborne. And a late foul is a late whistle is going to be called here as Boo Osborne picks up his second foul. That will send Tyshawn Johnson to the line for two. Osborne pleading his case that Tyshawn had used his arms to create space as his first one drops. And he was straight up, but the refs obviously seen something else. Second one is up and gets that one to fall. Lead back up to two for Dayton, 126-124. Ball gets down low to McKnight. McKnight looking to do his thing. And he's going to get called for an offensive foul hook. Wasn't expecting that. I don't believe he was either. And I think Brett McKnight has just picked up his sixth foul of the game, so he will have to come out. And A.J. Davis comes in. Wow, that was huge for the Condors to lose Brett McKnight in this overtime. But with bringing A.J. Davis in, same size, maybe a little bit taller, and he can score just as well. Bedford dishes it off to Johnson. Johnson with Osborne guarding him. Can't get that layup to fall. Richie Gordon there with the rebound, but it looks like uh, a loose ball foul is going to be called on Tyshawn Johnson, which will be his fourth. Johnson upset with himself that he wasn't able to finish that layup. Ballard with Bedford guarding him. Ends up getting it over to Todd Brown. They want to get the ball to Richie Gordon with a shorter Shuren on him. That ball somehow ends up in the hands of A.J. Davis. Finds Boo Osborne. He'll take the three. Boo Osborne knocks down the three. Great shot by Boo Osborne. To give them a 127-126 lead with 140 left to go here in overtime. Webster 
Gets the ball to Means. Ball ends up back in Webster's hands. Webster will take it all the way. And Todd Brown is going to pick up that foul. That's his first of the game. Not very happy, a little surprised with that call. As it looks like they've let some more physical calls go throughout this game. But Josh Webster will go to the line to try and convert the and one. Shot is up, and that one is short, can't convert. 130 left, 128, 127 lead here for the flight. Boo Osborne with the ball. Wants to get it down low to Richie Gordon. Richie Gordon having himself a good game. Richie Gordon short on that layup attempt, last touch. Last touch by Tyshawn Johnson. He's not happy with it, but I think a lot of people have seen that that ball was last touched by him. And the ref under the bucket couldn't see it as you were talking about earlier. Cody Ballard gets it down low to Richie Gordon with Sherwin all over him, but Sh Richie Gordon can't get the layup to go, but he will still go to the line for two as Sherwin picks up his third foul. And the Condors are down 127-128. Richie Gordon. Obviously upset with himself. He knew that that was an easy layup that should have been made. Yeah, he should have definitely made that. I think he went up a little bit too hard for it. Didn't probably realize it was that easy right there. He thought he had a lot of people over his back. Gordon able to knock down his first one. as he ties the game up here at 128 with 111 left. Second one is up, gets that one to fall, which gives them the 129-128 lead now. Webster bringing the ball up, guarded by Gordon now. Good defense there by Gordon, finds a cutting means, but he couldn't get the layup to fall. Ball ends up in the hands of Todd Brown. Todd Brown bringing it the other way, but he doesn't have any help. And the Dayton flight, a couple players rush the referee immediately. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the ref throw his arms up like, whoa, whoa back, back away from me, please. Back yeah, away from me. it looked like Cody Ballard was calling time out. Let's see, yes. Looks like Cody Ballard was calling time out as Todd Brown was, was crossing half court. And the ref didn't blow his whistle until Brown started to lose the ball. Man, we so that's why the flight players are upset. We never give enough recognition to these refs. I mean, they got to be in shape. They got to be able to run up and down the court with the players, and they got to be able to take the coaches yelling at them, the players yelling at them. We just don't give them enough recognition, man. Yeah, they are definitely on the short end of the stick most <laughs> of the time, but they do everything they can to make sure that they get the calls right, especially in a game like this, an overtime game, a one-point game with under a minute left to go now. Right. And... Uh, as I had said, Ballard with the Cody Ballard with a smart call to be able to uh, to call the timeout as it was Todd Brown bringing the ball up the floor one versus five. <laughs> we, and that's the thing, you know, when you're getting up and down and you're trying to play a, another team's game, sometimes you just got to say, wait a second, I'm just going to slow this down and I'm going to go back to what we know. So out of that timeout, as I said, one point game, the Condors have the lead, 129-128. 51 seconds, Todd Brown gets it into Richie Gordon. Fuller guarding Gordon. Richie trying to find his shot, which is to get to the basket. And is able to get it, Richie Gordon having himself a great fourth quarter and overtime, as Richie Gordon has seven points here in overtime. What's he at right now, 31, 32 points? Let's see, he had seven in the first and third, which is 14, two in the second, which is 16, 11 in the fourth, which is 27, and seven 
here in the overtime, which is 34. 31, I believe. I was, look, I was told I wouldn't have to do math here today, but <laughs> nonetheless, Richie Gordon is having himself a great game. Tyshawn Johnson ends up kicking it, trying to kick it out to Webster, but A.J. Davis there with the long arms, able to knock it out. Condors, 131-128 lead, 28.9 seconds. Shuren checks back in for Fuller. Little offense, defense, it looks like they have going on there. Webster gets it into Tyshawn Johnson. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Johnson will take a step back three. That one's short. Ends up in the hands of Webster. Then it goes to Bedford. Bedford with the three. That one's short. Bedford with the board. Kicks it out to Webster. That three's off the mark. Shuren with the rebound. Gets it out to Bedford. Bedford over to Johnson. Johnson's three is up. And Johnson knocks that three in to tie it up at 131. Tie game. You know, and I just had a feeling somebody was going to knock down a shot for the flight. If you get enough opportunities, eventually one has to go in. And who gets the wide open shot? Tyshawn Johnson. Johnson. Tyshawn Johnson with 35 points here. Through overtime, 7.8 seconds left, 131-131. And that hurts if you're the Condors because you knew that if you could have rebounded that ball, all of this could have been avoided. It would all be avoided. And I think, like I said earlier, the Condors are a little winded. They wanted to finish this game out. They're like, we do not want to go into a double overtime. But credit to the Dayton flight who stuck with it. They knew that they needed a three to get the game tied, which after all of that hustling and bustling around, the ball ended up in Johnson's hand, who was able to knock down the clutch three. Still a lot of time left. Um, I don't know, what would you do going right here? What, what, would, what, what would you think the best shot would be for the Condors? Who has the hot hand right now for the Condors? Right now, it's, it's between... I'd say it's Richie Gordon. Richie Gordon or Ty Brown. We'll see what happens. Time's not clock, running. Yep, clock did not start. <laughs> One of the fans saying like five seconds should have ran off. Of course, a Dayton Flights fan. They want to make sure that they have a chance to go into a second overtime. So we'll try this again here. Boo Osborne is going to inbound it to Cody Ballard. Ballard with the ball. And it looks like the screen is going to be set up for... Oh, comes over to Todd Brown. Or Boo Osborne, Boo Osborne's going to take the three, and he gets fouled, and he will go to the line with .2 seconds left. Tyshawn Johnson not happy with the call. And it looked like as Boo Osborne was going up, Johnson got under him and didn't give him enough space to come straight down. Didn't give him enough space. Uh, if, he, if he ice all of these right here, uh, you can pretty much say it's over. I don't think the flight would have enough time to get a shot off. Well, maybe if they, they call a timeout and get something towards the rim. With .2 seconds left, they would need a lot. But first, Boo Osborne has to knock down these to free throws. That first one is up and gets that one to go to give them a 132-131 lead. Ref calls an official timeout because there's a little wet spot that he sees on the floor. Condor player's not happy with it. Think they're trying to get Boo Osborne out of his rhythm. Looks like he might be working for the flight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Boo not. <laughs> Boo Osborne still has two free throws. His second one is up and good, gives them the two point lead. As I said, 0.2 seconds left here on the shot clock. Oh, and he just throws it up, but still makes it in. I think he wanted to take that time off. Yeah, he did. 
And with that, with a wild ending to overtime, or to the fourth quarter, with which a lot of people thought Richie Gordon had a controversial tip out. That was overtime. No, that was at the end of the fourth quarter. Because remember, Means was went to the free throw line. Right. Tried to put the game away. The ball was inside the cylinder, but in this league, you are allowed to do that when the ball is inside the cylinder to tip it out, which gave the Condors an opportunity to win it in overtime, which they did. Thanks to a Boo Osborne foul by Tyshawn Johnson, who was able to put the game away 134 131. And man, Tyler or Randall, that game was just words can't be described how amazing that game ended. That was an excellent game in overtime. Um, Condors came out fighting, they didn't give up, they were down early in the first half down early um, in the third quarter, and they just kept fighting. And as you can see, they came out with the victory. And uh, definitely who helped that victory was behind the, I think we said, I don't have the official score totaled up here, but he had at least 30 points. Richie Gordon has to be the player of the game for this Condors team. Yeah, R yeah Richie Gordon would have had a great game. Him and Brett McKnight down low, they were a lot to handle down there. And, you know, Richie Gordon, he has to be the player of the game because, like you said, he had the knowledge to knock that, that ball out of the cylinder with those feeble rules. And then he was just a lot to handle down low. Um, I would definitely get a game to uh, Richie Gordon. Yeah, and uh, Boo Osborne a little quiet in the first half, but the second half he really – he really came alive, and as we had mentioned, once he gets that look in his eye, he does not like to lose. Nobody on this Condors team likes to, likes to lose, and they proved it today by being able to show up, and, uh, man, they were able to get the job done. Able to get the job done. I think at first they were kind of feeding into the Dayton flight as far as playing that up-and-down pace game. But, you know, just because you play an up-and-down up pace game, it doesn't mean that you're so much a better team. I actually think the Condors have a lot better athletes in the Dayton flight, and they just need to get in a rhythm and, 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 and play defense and keep it going. And as you can see, they did when they pulled out that victory. So Tyshawn Johnson for the Dayton flight averages 24 and a half points a game, had 35 today leading all scores, and Jordan Bedford with the electric fourth quarter in overtime finishes with 28. But Richie Gordon leads the way for the Condors with 34 and helps give the Columbus Condors a 131, 134 to 131 victory here over the Dayton flight. Man, this has been an exciting one, but Unfortunately, it is time to go. Definitely time to go. I think I think we're going to um, get a uh, interview out of Richie Gordon here for a second. Talk to the player of the game. Okay. Well, while we are getting ready for that, we will go ahead and take a short break and be back for the interview with Richie. This is TBL Basketball here on the Score on Air Network. Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis Program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 
Have you always dreamed about a career in sports broadcasting but aren't sure where to begin? Well, if so, then look no further than the Sports Emphasis program at The Ohio Media School. Whether in front of the camera, on the microphone, or behind the scenes, you'll learn from a pro to be a pro in the Sports Emphasis program at The Ohio Media School. You'll get hands-on training and live in-the-field experience at some of Ohio's biggest sporting events. You'll be the star of your very own webcast, and you'll get the opportunity to interview some of Ohio's biggest athletes. Call us today at 614-655-5250 or visit our website at beonair.com. Can you see yourself working on TV, radio, or social media? As media professionals, we make our voice heard. Call the Ohio Media School and be a part of something bigger than you and me. You'll train and get the skills you need to work in TV, radio, social media, film, and much more. I graduated and now am working as a director of marketing at a local radio station. My future is set. Call the Ohio Media School now and be a part of something bigger. 614-723-9675. 614-723-9675. Back here at the Ohio Sports Complex where the Columbus Condors just knocked off the Dayton flight in a 134-131 to brawling overtime victory. Seth Donahoe alongside Randall Smith. And Randall, as we had said, that one was exciting to watch. This is what, this is what it's all about. Basketball at its finest. TBL basketball. The Columbus Condors came out and won an overtime game. They fought back. They were down by thinking what? 13 points. 16, I believe, 16 was the most. points. Um, they came back. Richie yeah. Gordon came and hit some great shots. Knocked out a shot in the fourth quarter that could have possibly won the game for the Dayton flight. And they didn't know a lot about those rules, those people rules that the TBL <laughs> used. So great game by the Columbus Condors. Well, as we had said, we uh, decided that Richie Gordon would be the player of the game. Now let's go ahead and throw it over to Will Ward, who is with Richie Gordon. I'm Will Ward, and I'm here with the Mojo Sports Gear player of the game, Richie Gordon. Richie, you guys had an amazing fourth quarter comeback that led to overtime. Tell me about that fourth quarter comeback that led to overtime victory. It was a fight, period, point blank. It was a dog fight. That was a good team. We are a good team. We came out and played just a little bit better than, we, than they did. That's all. It was a dog fight. Hey, now I got physical right there in the second half. You know, you guys fought back real well. Tell me about that physicality that, that led to the victory again. Uh, the thing is, they're, they're a real good team. They got some physical players. They play hard. They play smart. We play hard. We play smart. It's going to be a fight every single time. That's the TBL, for real, for real. And with the TBL and the Condors with another victory, I'm Will Ward. We're here with Richie Gordon, the player of the game. We're closing out. Ohio Media School, score on air, we're out. All right, that was Will Ward with our Mojo Sports Gear player of the game. Once again, Richie Gordon, uh, congratulations being that Mojo Sports Gear player of the game, helping lead the Condors to a 131, uh, 134, 131 player, uh, 134, 131, sorry, Richie threw me off there for a second, victory <laughs> over the uh, Dayton flight. This has been the TBL uh, Basketball League here on the Scroll on Air Network. I'm Seth Donahoe alongside Randall Smith. And until then, we'll see you next time.